I was a big fan of the original Driver when it first released on the PlayStation 1 in 1999. It managed to capture the excitement of movie-style car chases in a 3D open world at a time when the GTA series was still confined to a top-down 2D design. Driver 2 followed a year later, and while not as positively received by critics, I still found a lot to like about the game, despite its engine beginning to creak under the power restraints of the PS1 hardware. Imagine my excitement then, when Driver 3 was released on PlayStation 2 and Xbox in 2004, with a PC release following a year later. And imagine my confusion when I sat down to play it. Word goes out South Beach lost one of their V8s. And every known hit man in Miami's asking for you. Three hours later, you're walking right down the middle of Collins Avenue, tight with Tico's gang. You cut a deal, Bacchus, but you're not going to give them back their V8. I am. The story sees the return of series protagonist John Tanner as he tries to infiltrate a notorious crime gang responsible for the international theft and sales of cars and guns. As with previous Driver games, the story is told through stylish cutscenes, with voice talent provided by Hollywood stars such as Michael Madsen, Ving Rhames, Michelle Rodriguez and Mickey Rourke. But despite the obvious efforts to craft a movie-inspired plot, the story comes off a bit cliché and uninteresting. But that doesn't matter a whole lot because ultimately Driver is all about driving, right? Well, not really, because in what would seem to be an effort to compete with the now 3D critical successes of GTA 3 and Vice City, Driver is also about running, shooting, sailing, and even swimming. The game takes place across three cities, Miami, Nice and Istanbul, and while not the best looking game on the PS2 by a long shot, there's something about the game's realistic-ish graphics that appeals to me, and some of the lighting effects in particular really add to the experience. The cars look good and they are just as enjoyable to drive as in past games. If you haven't played a driver game, then you won't really understand what I mean when I say that the cars have heft. The handling feels heavy, but in a really good way, and you'll wrestle with the analogue stick as you weave in and out of traffic and perform handbrake turns. I can honestly say that the open world driving in Driver 3 is supremely enjoyable. It's everything else that's a mess. If only Tanner's feet handled as well as the muscle car he keeps in his garage. You move forward and backwards and strafe left and right with the left analogue stick, leaving the right analogue stick to turn and look around. But the turning is so stiff and unresponsive that you'll spend half of the game strafing upstairs and falling off platforms. And that's before you try to actually shoot anybody. Far too many missions will have you awkwardly lining up your targeting reticule as you attempt to move around a level instead of burning rubber on the streets of Miami as police sirens wail all around you. As for the police themselves, they behave the same as they did in previous games. Running a red light or going over the speed limit is enough for them to unleash lethal force to make sure you don't do it again. Unfortunately, the new mission variation means that they'll often be disabled during various points of the game. When they do chase you though, they'll smash and bash you until you can either lose them or end up dead. They truly are an unstoppable force, and on one occasion they even followed me into the ocean in their efforts to apprehend me, where we all had a lovely little swim. The gameplay has you constantly switching between running and gunning and driving and boating and can be incredibly difficult and unforgiving at times. But the biggest challenge is undoubtedly the on-foot action, which can range from annoying to downright broken. At one point I ran into a bug which killed me every time I tried to jump around my speedboat. And yet, when you're behind the wheel of one of the game's many cars, the experience feels fun and exciting, just like the original did on PS1. If you can withstand the frustrating difficulty and grit your teeth through the shooting sections, then there's a beautiful open world driving experience to be had here. But developers Reflections Interactive really make you work for it. Thankfully though, there is a take a ride mode that lets you skip everything else and just drive. Thanks so much for watching, please remember to like and subscribe, and I'll be back next week with another video from the Random Game Room.